Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Talking Assets. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through how you can deal with missing data in accounting analytics analyses. Let's hop over now to a data set that I have that uses actual SEC filing data, data from companies 10Ks, um, where there are cases where we have missing values in the data. And I'm gonna talk to you about what we should do with these cases of missing data. Okay, so what I have here is a set of data that I've downloaded for fiscal year 2019 for all publicly traded companies. And what I want to do with this is I want to take this data that I have on companies' assets, net income, revenue, stockholders' equity, and I want to perform DuPont ratio analysis. And so I've already performed these calculations. Profitability is just net income divided by revenue. Asset turnover is revenue divided by assets. And leverage is assets over equity. I've now calculated return on equity and the components of return on equity for the DuPont ratio analysis for every company that I have available in my data set. So the full data set, I've, I've done those calculations. So I'm seeing errors where I can't divide by zero in the profitability calculation. And we've determined that many of those are because companies have zero revenue reported. And so profitability is net income divided by revenue and you can't divide by zero if there's zero revenue, so you get an error. The first thing to do if you have missing data is to try to understand why you have missing data. So let's look at one company. So I pulled up Skillsoft Corporation. Um, I took their SEC identifier, their CIK number, and I looked up their, their financial information on the SEC's website. Okay, so you could see here, we're getting an error in our profitability calculation, and that error is stemming from the fact that they are reporting zero revenue, okay? So does that make sense? Do they, is it plausible that a publicly traded company has zero revenue, and it looks like also zero net income? So let's think about that, okay? Let's, let's go and look at their actual 10K filing. So here is the 10K, and if you remember this company in our data set was referred to Skillsoft or referred to as Skillsoft, here the 10K filing is listed as Churchill Capital Corporation. If we look at the details on the SEC's website, we can see this company Skillsoft Corp had a former name as Churchill Capital Corporation through June 8th, 2021. Okay, so they recently changed their name. And so that's why this filing has Churchill Capital Corporation listed here. So let, let's look at what this company does. Let's go to item one and look at the business. So we are a blank check company formed for the purpose of effecting a merger. Okay. So this is an unusual case. This company is a blank check corporation, which are companies that have either no business plan or no strategy or they are formed solely for the purpose uh, of acquiring another company or merging with another company, okay? So it's, it's kind of an unusual company. Similar in some ways to a special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC, but we have a very unique company here. And let's see if in fact, if we go to the company's financial statements. Okay, so if we look at the statement of operations for 2019, there is no revenue listed. It looks like uh, they had some operating and forma formation costs. They had some other income. The, the numbers look like they're mostly correct. I'm not sure why net income was not pulled in, but revenue was missing because there are there is no revenue for this company. And we have um, the right number for total asset. But let's think about what we should do with this this uh, data point, this this observation in the data set. So we're trying to perform DuPont ratio analysis and we can't because this company has no revenue. We should step back for a minute and say, does it even make sense to do DuPont ratio analysis on this company? Is this a fit for this type of analysis? We don't wanna just blindly perform analyses without thinking about what the goal is or whether or not it makes sense to do that particular type of analysis. So in this particular case, my opinion would be, 
it doesn't even make sense to do DuPont ratio analysis for this company because it's an unusual company. It's a blank check corporation. It has no revenue. And so the DuPont ratio analysis is meant to understand how we generate return for our shareholders. Is it coming from sales to customers? Is it coming from us um, using our assets effectively to generate sales, asset turnover? Is it coming from our capital structure? Are we effectively capitalized between debt and equity, right? Well, most of those questions don't really make sense for this company and what their business strategy is. This company is meant, it's set up solely for the purpose of merging with another company or acquiring another company. So in this particular case, if I were performing this ratio analysis, this DuPont ratio analysis, I would delete this observation. I would just delete it from the data set. And I wouldn't have any worries about deleting it or anything like that. It just doesn't make sense to do this type of analysis for this observation. But what else could we do with cases like this? What are, are some other ways of treating missing values? Well, you could do a number of different things and it all really depends on what your question is. What are you trying to accomplish with your analysis? So your options are one, you could delete the data that has missing observations, right? So in this case, I'm recommending deleted, deleting the observation because it doesn't make sense to do DuPont ratio analysis on this data. Um, another option is to impute the value. So estimate the value that is missing. So can we come up with some estimate of what revenue would be if that data was not missing? And so one way of doing this, and it's kind of an old way of doing it, there are better methods of doing it, but conceptually, what you do is you, you estimate the value. And an older way of estimating that value would be to take the average, take the average of all the other observations and plug that average in for the missing value, all right? So that would be called imputing the number. So you're estimating the number. That's another way of dealing with it. Another way of dealing with the missing data is just treat the missing data as a data point. Say, you know, in your data, code it in such a way that if the number is missing, it takes a value of one. And if it's not missing, it takes a value of zero. And so you can save the observation and you can say, okay, I'm going to treat this as a data point. The fact that that data is missing tells me something about that data point. And then finally, another way of dealing with missing data is to look at it all different ways. So try deleting the observations and see what you get in your analysis. Try imputing the value in your data and see what you get out of your analysis. Try treating the missing data as a data point and do it all different ways and see if the conclusions that you reach in each of those ways, each of those methodologies gives you a similar answer. All right. So, Unfortunately, th this is a case where there is no one answer for how to deal with missing data. It really comes down to what is your question? What are you trying to figure out when you're performing accounting data analytics? And what are you trying to accomplish? And you really have to use critical thinking skills. Does it make sense? Why is it missing? Is there a pattern? All of these questions are really important when you're performing analysis. Data analysis is not automated. It requires you to think and you have to think carefully about these missing data points. All right, so this concludes this episode of Talking Assets. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care.